Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Investors Trading Academy lecture series, Speculate, Invest, and Trade the Financial Markets from Profit, from Start to Profit. And this is our lecture number seven on technical tools. Now, I would appreciate it greatly if you could click down below on the subscribe button or on the bell icon. I promise you, we're not going to bother you. You'll just get a ping whenever I upload a new video to the YouTube channel. So please subscribe. It's very, very important to me. Now, if you've been following along, you know that this series of lectures is a series of nine lectures. This is lecture number seven. Now you start off learning the basics of the financial markets and then move on to learning and understanding technical and fundamental analysis, how to read charts. And there we move on to making smart trading and investing decisions. And each lecture will slowly prepare you to move forward. So it's very important that you take these lectures in order so that you have a very deep understanding building the ABCs so that you can move forward in trading. Too many traders start at the end and don't really understand the basis and where it all comes from and how everything ties together. So remember, this is lecture number seven. And today we're talking about technical tools. We've already talked about technical analysis and the whole broad field of technical analysis. And the term technical analysis is a complicated sounding name for a very basic approach to investing. Simply put, technical analysis is the study of price with charts being the primary tool. And hence, I call technical analysis chart analysis. I'm a chartist. I'm not a technical analyst and I'm not a fundamental trader. I trade using my charts and specific elements and tools on charts because you cannot trade. You can't even invest really without a chart because if I were to say to you, Google's trading at 142.4, 142.7, went up to 142.9, fell back down to 141.72, went back to 149.2, went down to 147, went back up to 143, went down to 144. Could you see any of that? Could you repeat any of it? Could you make any sense out of it? But by putting that on a chart in a graphical depiction, we can then start making sense out of it. Now, the roots of modern day technical analysis stem from Dow theory, developed around the 1900s by Charles Dow. And it, everything we have today either is directly related or indirectly related to Dow theory. The roots include such principles as trending natures of price, price discounting all known information, confirmation and divergence, volume, mirroring changes in price, support and resistance, and of course the widely followed Dow Jones Industrial Average, and it's a direct offspring of Dow theory. Charles Dow's contribution to modern day technical analysis cannot be understated. His focus on the basics of security price give rise to a completely new method of analyzing the markets. Now, Something Charles Dow was not a mathematician. Charles Dow was not a broker. Charles Dow was really not part of the financial markets. Charles, Charles Dow was a very smart man and a journalist who used keen observation and his skills to write on what he observed in the financial markets. And he didn't even put all of his stuff together to make his theories. He, he wrote on what he saw. And it wasn't until a few years later that a market ana analysis and a mathematician was able to combine this all together to make the Dow principle. So Charles Dow never realized when he was doing this, what he was actually doing. And he modernized and revolutionized the entire world of investing and how markets operated. Now, traders who subscribe to the technical analysis, to technical analysis operate under the fundamental theory that price moves in patterns and that price never lies. To the inexperienced eye, a financial chart may look like an unpredictable line with a jumble of colors and marks. But traders are watching charts to pick up on the subtlest of indicators of where prices might be headed to next. Now, even to me, some charts look like some modern day painting, something I can't interpret. I mean, I've seen people go to art galleries and stare at modern painting, okay? We call that modern art. I can't see it. 
I'm not saying it's good, bad, or indifferent. It confuses the hell out of me, but my eyes don't interpret. But you give me a price chart, I can see beauty. But then there's some people's price charts that are just a disastrous mess. It's just like looking at the old days before we had GPS and we had to use a real road atlas or a map. And I would open up this atlas and I would see all of these colors and lines and dots and dashes and symbols. I would get, I would get frustrated. Now, my business partner in those days was excellent at maps. So I would drive, Peter would navigate, and we would never get lost. He could look at those things and he would tell me, go to the roundabout, take the second right exit off the roundabout, go one quarter mile, pull past the, the, the uh, petrol station and make a right and go three blocks. And, and he would see all this on a map. I couldn't discern it. I was the guy that was calling every few minutes saying, okay, I'm, I think I'm almost there. I'm a little bit lost. Here's what I see. Can you help me? Well, charts are the same way. You have to be able to see what's going on. Now, the main similarity between technical analysis indicators is they all use securities prices. They have the open, the high, the low, and the close in volume. That's it. Okay, now there's all types of mathematical formulas and statistical formulas we use, but the basics are all those same numbers because, and everybody has those same numbers because the euro closed at one o'clock today or is trading at 115 today at and that open high low and close is not subjective it's what it was it's a historical fact now technical indicators fall mainly into two categories leading and lagging now this is not like you know your teacher calling you and telling your kids leading the class and you're really happy or the kids lagging behind the class and you're really upset Leading and lagging indicators do not, do not have good or bad connotations. A leading indicator are those that lead price movement and predict where price is going to go before something actually happens. A lagging indicator confirms that something has actually happened. Indicators from both categories belong to the following types. You have trend indicators, momentum indicators, volatility indicators, and volume indicators. Now remember, technical indicators are just mathematical calculations that can be applied to an asset's past patterns like price or volume. Technical indicators do not analyze any part of the fundamental business. It does, technical indicators don't look at earnings, revenue, profit margins. Now there are formulas that are used for those, but those all fall under fundamental analysis. The result of the value that we calculate is not really a trading signal. It is not telling you to make this trade. Indicators alert, they predict, and then they confirm. Technical indicators are most extensively used by active traders in the market as they are primarily designed for analyzing short-term price movements. Technical indicators have no value to long-term investors. So the first group of indicators are trend indicators. Now we've learned in other classes about trends and trend lines. And now there's indicators that will confirm a trend, tell you when a trend is starting, tell you when a trend is in trouble. Identifying trends over different time frames are useful because it can help weed out all the noise of volatility. Any type of trend, including uptrends, downtrends, and sideways trends can be traded for a profit so long as it's shown itself to be consistent. Trend traders use several different indicators to help them figure out what kind of trend an asset is in. One of the most popular indicators is moving averages. Moving averages are used many in many different applications, and we're going to talk about moving averages and different type of moving averages. But moving averages are a very important tool because moving averages take the noise out of the markets and help you clearly see if price is staying above a short-term moving average, you have an uptrend. If it's staying below, is you have a downtrend. Then we have volume, of course. Volume is very important. You've heard me lecture on volume. Volume is your confirmation tool. If volume doesn't support your decision, then leave it alone. Volume is the measure of total number of shares that trade in a given period for the stocks. For commodities, it's the number of contracts. For Forex, it's a very difficult tool to use because 
the volume you see on a Forex broker's platform is the volume traded either by, through that Forex broker, which does give you a good indication of the market, or it's the volume that's being put through that market maker or that liquidity provider. Because in a Forex market, there is no global exchange. There's no exchange that has all the exact numbers. Because remember, the Forex market is a series of computers around the world that connect together, talk to each other, and clear trades, but there is no exchange. Now, it's even a little bit more different in cryptocurrency. And cryptocurrency, you do have some volume reports that put together all the volume coming out of the major crypto exchanges so that you can see if Bitcoin is being bought up like crazy or Bitcoin is being sold like crazy. Now, sometimes market conditions or the lack of liquidity can temporarily drive up an asset's price higher or lower. However, these moves often occur on relatively low volume and are, not sh and are just short-lived. On the other hand, if an asset makes a big move on extremely high volume, that's a reliable signal that there's a major buying or major selling going on. Then we have momentum indicators. Momentum indicators are like speedometers for the market or for an asset. Okay. You might see that the asset is trending up or trending down. But you'd like to be able to measure the momentum it has because an asset can keep going up and up and up but slowly loses momentum while it's still going up. So imagine you shoot a rocket or a firework up into the sky. It can still climb and climb and climb. And it's very hard to visually see that it's starting to lose momentum. When you can see that the momentum is lost, it's gonna take on a new trajectory and then it might fall back to earth. But realizing that there's been a shift in momentum can alert you to many things because the market is not necessarily going to fall but maybe you want to move your stop loss closer maybe you want to move your target points maybe you want to do something else and then we have volatility volatility is a measure of how large an asset's movement is each period tends to be in other words it's judging from the low to the high and how big that range is because that's very very important because the open and the close can end up relatively the same, but it could have large volatility where there's large swings up and large swings down. Volatility is so important that the Chicago Board of Exchange Volatility Index, the world's famous VIX, is one of the most closely watched indicators in the entire world. Additional to the VIX, traders use volatility metrics such as true, true average range, and Bollinger Bands is one of the most popular in our industries. So we have trend indicators and they measure. So we're going to go back over talking about a little bit more about each of those categories. We have trend indicators that measure the direction and strength of a trend using some form of averaging to establish a baseline. Most trend indicators are lagging because most indicators are lagging because they're using market data that's already happened to do their calculations. So one of the most important trend indicators is uh, moving averages. And then from there, we come to my favorite. And I don't really use indicators at all, but when I need to, because to me, an indicator is just an interpreter. When I can't see a clear picture, I use indicators. And I love MACD. And MACD also is a lagging indicator. And even though moving averages are, we've come up with exponential moving averages, weighted moving averages, and displaced moving averages to reduce that lag and displaced moving averages actually moves the indicator to a leading indicator. So remember, leading indicators give trade signals when the trend is about to start, where lagging indicators are those that follow the price action. So moving averages, they're used to identify trends and reversals as well as to set up support and resistance levels. These indicators are designed to show traders and investors the trend or direction of the asset they are trading. The trend of an asset can be either downwards, upwards, or sideways. Okay. Now, momentum indicators, which we talked about the rocket going up in the air, help identify the speed of the price movement by comparing price over time. It can also be used to analyze volume. 
it is calculated by comparing the current closing price to the previous closing price. Typically, this appears as a line below the price chart that oscillates as momentum changes. And we have several very famous momentum indicators. That's stochastics and RSI. And both of these are leading indicators. And these technical indicators may identify the speed of price movement by comparing the current closing price to previous close. Stochastics use the is used to predict price turning points by comparing the closing price to its range. Relative strength index measures recent trading strength, velocity of change in the trend, and the magnitude of the move. So remember, the momentum is a measure of the speed at which a value of a security is moving in any given period. And then we have volatility indicators. Volatility tells us how much volatility is in the market. That's very, very important. Because maybe if the market's getting too volatile, you want to get out of it. Or maybe when the market's very contrite, you can put your stop loss closer to your opening price. Or when a market has high volatility, maybe you need to figure out that you have to put your stop loss a lot farther away because of the swings in the marketplace. So volatility is so important in trading that you can find several indicators that measure it or use it to generate signals. And then volume. Volume is your confirmation tool. It measures the strength of a trend and confirms a trading decision or direction based on some form of averaging the smoothing of the raw volume. The strongest trends occur when volume increases. In fact, it is the increase in trading volume that can lead to large movements in price. So we have things like check in oscillator, on balance volume, and volume rate of change. These technical indicators measure the strength of the trend based on the volume of assets, shares, contracts being traded. Now, we're going to go back and talk about some terms we need to know that relate to technical indicators. And it relates mostly to relative strength index and stochastics, but they're used a great deal in the marketplace and too many traders misuse them. And that is overbought and oversold. When an indicator or a market is considered overbought, that means that the too much buying has gone in and pushed the price up too high. Oversold is the exact opposite. But just like a trend, just because it's losing its momentum doesn't mean it's going to reverse. A market that is overbought can remain overbought for quite some time. It's an indication that there's a problem within the market. Oversold also. So when a security is overbought, the implication is that buying is pushed to price too far and a reaction called a price pullback is expected. When an asset is oversold, the implication is that the selling has pushed the price far too low and it's oversold. Now indicators serve three broad functions. They alert, they confirm, and they predict. An indicator can act as an alert to study price action a little bit more closely. It's like a slap in the back of your head. Like when MACD gives you a buy or sell signal or an alert, it's hitting you in the back of the head and say, here's a possible opportunity. Indicators can also be used to confirm other technical analysis tools. Indicators can tell you there's a problem with the analysis you've made or you're missing a picture. Okay. I mean, if your volume indicator is not showing an increase in volume and you want to make a trade and you're sure it's all going, you have a breakout and everything else, your volume indicator is telling you, hey, rethink your decision because it's not confirming. So it confirms. Because remember, indicators only indicate and they cannot and do not tell you what to trade. Okay. They are part of your filter system and your strategy to make a decision. So remember, indicators only indicate. This may sound straightforward, 
but sometimes traders ignore the price action of security and focus solely on an indicator. You know, I've heard RSI and stochastics are both telling me to, to sell, sell, sell. They're both way into the oversold territory. I'm going to sell. I'll look at them and say, first of all, you're using two indicators that tell you the same thing because they use the same basic calculations. And so why is why would one tell you the same as the other? They always will tell you the same as the other. The second thing is they're just telling you the market's oversold. They're not telling you to sell, sell, buy, buy. They're just giving you information. So even though it may be obvious when indicators generate buy and sell signals, the signal should be taken in context with other technical analysis tools and strategies. An indicator may flash a buy signal, but if the chart pattern shows a descending triangle with a series of declining peaks, you know it's a false signal. Now, as always in technical analysis, learning how to read indicators is more of a science, more of an art than a science. And the same indicator may exhibit different behavioral patterns when applied to different assets, different markets, different market classes. So you can't just jump and say, I'm using Bollinger Bands and I'm going to use it for my Forex trading and I'm going to do it exactly the same when I trade my stocks. It will work in stocks, but it's going to have a different reaction time. You have to understand what they are and how they work in different markets. Now, there are hundreds of indicators in use today with new indicators being created every week. Technical analysis software programs come with dozens of indicators built in and even allow you to create or personalize them. For instance, MACD may be based on a 12, 26, and a 9. It's a 12 period moving average, a 26 period moving average, and a 9 period smoothing moving average. Okay. Now, you could decide you want to use it at 10, 24, and a 14, and you can adjust those indicators. But remember, then you've customized and personalized it, and then you have to test it to make sure that it fits your trading strategy. So when choosing an indicator to use for analysis, choose carefully and moderately. Attempts to cover more than five indicators are usually futile. It is best to focus on two or three indicators and learn their intricacies in, inside and out. For example, it would be redundant to use two indicators that are good for showing overbought and oversold letters such as stochastics and RSI. Both of these indicators measure momentum and both have overbought and oversold levels. But for some reason, so many traders decide they're going to use RSI and stochastics. We now have a combination RSI stochastics. And I, I meet more new traders that tell me, well, I do everything with my, I have RSI and I have stochastics on my chart and I have MACD on my chart. And, you know, and what they're doing is they're doing redundancies. They're creating multicolonarity. So remember, you need to understand whether your indicators are leading or lagging. And you need to make sure where they fit into the groups on either side. Now remember, moving average is one of the most used indicators because number one, it is the backbone of several other indicators. MACD, which is one of the most popular, uses two moving averages. Bollinger Bands uses a 20 period moving average as a central line. A lot of them focus their initial calculation using a moving average and then using multiple moving averages make a moving average crossover strategy. So for instance, maybe you'd want to use a 10 and a 20 period or 10 and a 30 period moving average. And when they cross over, that generates buy and sell signals. There's lots of strategies using different combinations. There's a lot of strategies that use three moving averages. You can use a 10, a 30, and a 60. It all depends on what market you're in also, which, which ones you would use. Okay. Now, you have to know that number one, a shorter period moving average is faster than a longer period moving average because in a shorter period say you're using a 10 period moving average it's going back 10 periods if you're using a 15 minute chart it's going back 10 15 minutes so it's analyzing the price over the last 150 minutes if you're using a 10 as well as a 30 that 30 period chart the 30 period moving average is going back 15 minutes for 30 periods or 450 minutes of time and it's using 
30 closes. Well, if you've had a relatively strong move in the last, say, one hour of the last four segments, and the price has jumped way up, well, when you tab that all together and divide it by 10, that price, that moving average is going to increase more drastically because the price move has been in that you've only divided by 10. Or if you're using a 30 period and you've had that jump up in the last four time periods, okay, it's going to calculate it all together over 30 closes and divide. So it reacts to market shifts slower. So always the shorter period and moving average is considered faster. The longer period is slower. Now there's many moving average strategies that use a much longer, use three moving averages. And it's very unique because what they'll do is when they, not only will they cross over, will they generate signals, but they also create what I call dead man's land. That when prices between two different indicator ranges and you see in the market an open area, that becomes dead man's zone. You don't make a trade in between that area. And when the long period moving average climbs above the shorter period or below, below the shorter period, it's telling you something about the markets. So over in, moving averages are a very interesting tool. Now, because moving averages are a um, le lagging indicator, and they really do lag price. We've tried to give them more, less lag and more value by creating what's called the EMA, the exponential weight moving average. An exponential moving average is uses a formula that gives more weight to the last few periods. So in other words, if you're going back a 10 period or a 30 period or 40 period, there's a formula that you use and it actually gives more value to the, the last four periods, whether the last four periods moved up, down, or stayed sideways. But it, it brings it closer to, it makes it less lagging. And then we have the new displaced moving average, which uses a simple moving average, takes it the same formula, but instead of putting it on your chart at this time period, it puts the dot on your chart three, five, depending on what you chose, five time periods forward. So it becomes almost a leading indicator. So there's many ways to use moving averages. They're quite fascinating and unique. And then we have to talk about the different types of indicators. And you'll hear us talk about all the time oscillators. Oscillators are indicators that bounce like radio waves between two levels. So even though MACD is a set of formulas, additions, and positives. Whatever those numbers come out to, they're going to be charted above and below on your, your they go on the bottom of your chart. And they're on a center line because MACD is either going to be a negative or a positive number because you're subtracting one moving average from the next. Okay. Well, you're subtracting a, a fast moving average from a slow moving average, a 12 and a 26. And whatever the difference is, you plot it. If one falls the the longer period moving average is falls way below the way below the longer period or goes above them the longer period shorter period moving average the number you calculate will be a negative so it'll be plotted on your chart in a negative and then the next time it could be a positive so they're centered on a zero line and they oscillate up and down we also have what we call bounded oscillators Bounded oscillators are exactly like stochastics in RSI. Their calculations, no matter how they come out, will always come out between 0 and 100. So they're bound in this range between 0 and 100. So they're called banded oscillators. Banded oscillators fluctuate above and below two bands that signify extreme price levels. The lower band represents oversold readings and the upper band represents overbought readings. Now, RSI might be a 70 and a 30. It's always a 0 and 100. And anything above 70 to 100 could be classified as overbought. And anything below 30 to 0 would be classified as oversold. Now, there's all different types of modifications. We use 75, 25, you use 60, 40, you use 80, 20. Okay. But they're bounded between these levels. 
So here you see stochastics and RSI. So RSI is using a 70-30 in this particular, and that's the basic formula. And anything below 30 is oversold, anything above 70 is overbought, where stochastics is using an 80-20, but they're still bounded between 0 and 100. Now, centered oscillators are best used to identify the underlying strength and direction of momentum behind a move. Broadly speaking, readings above the center line indicate bullish momentum and readings below the center line bearish momentum. So remember, we've talked about overbought and oversold, but they come primarily from banded oscillators. So please, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon down below because it is important to me. Don't go away, we're not finished yet. Now, banded oscillators are best used to identify overbought and oversold conditions. However, overbought is not meant to act as a sell signal and oversold is not meant to act as a buy signal. To improve the robustness of oscillator signals, traders look for multiple signals. The criteria for a buy and sell signal could depend on three separate yet confirming signals. A buy signal might be generated with an oversold reading, positive divergence, and a bullish moving average crossover. Conversely, a sell signal might be generated from a negative divergence, bearish moving average cross crossover, and a bearish center line cross. It is dangerous to trade an oscillator signal against a major trend of the market. So whenever you, if you're getting, if you see a major trend and the oscillator is telling you the opposite, uh-uh, don't make the trade. Price and trends are the ultimate decision makers. All oscillators and indicators can give you false signals. You need to use other f pieces of information to determine their reliability. So they're most effective in conjunction with pattern analysis, support and resistance identification, true trend identification, or other technical tools. Being aware of the broader picture, oscillators can be put into context. So that's all for today, folks. Our next class will start moving us into advanced analysis. And then we're going to start putting these together to build trading strategies. And then we're going to look at the individual markets and how we might want to use these in options, ETFs, stocks, CFD trading. I mean, there's all types of various ways to trade. And we'll get to it in our next courses as we build you your basics of to speculate, invest, and trade for profit in the margins. markets. Thank you very much and have a great trading day.